Hey there, we're down in one of my very favorite places at the Cincinnati Zoo, our Insectarium. It's the 45th anniversary. Yay. <laughs> this was the first Insectarium anywhere in North America and remains today one of the leading ones here anywhere in the whole wide world. We're with Michelle, who's a senior keeper, and you think, okay, she takes care of butterflies or beetles, but we also have other animals, including insect-like mammals, which sounds crazy, but these are naked mole rats. When this building opened, we were the first ever to display them for the public. And there was a lot to learn then, but there's still a lot to learn now. There is plenty of plenty to learn, especially with this species, because they're a fossorial or underground species. So you're always learning more and more and more because you can't always get a great look at them in their natural habitat. Exactly. So. And I said they are insect-like because my understanding is they are sort of eusocial and have one female, almost like a queen of yes. a termite or an ant. Yes, so they are, they cooperative, cooperatively brood their young and they have overlapping generations. So they do have kind of a caste system like bees and ants, mm -hmm. wasps, um, where they've got one or two breeding females and then a bunch of kind of workers and a few yeah. breeding males yeah. and that's it. And it's just this communal colony, tight-knit group that tunnel all the time, they nest together, they forage together, and they that's yeah. how they protect themselves. Yeah. So And one of the things they're famous for is they're extremely long lived for yes. rodents. You know, yes. you think of most small rodents, they don't live very long, like no. a year or two. Correct. But these live a long, long time. Yes. I think the oldest known mole rat was twenty nine years old. That's, which that is, is incredible for, for such a, rodent. a small animal. Yes. Now all the animals at the zoo get a lot of veterinary care. Mm -hmm. Some of those are common sense things you'd think, like, oh, can we check the blood pressure of a gorilla or right. do a blood test on an elephant? But I understand the vets have even done some recent exams on these guys. Yes, so a few weeks ago, we had the vets take a look at all 17 of our individuals here, and they did some blood work to make sure organ function and everything was, was looking good. They did radiographs to see bone density because that's really important in a colony that burrows. Um, and uh, they did ultrasounds as well, just to make sure that they could see if all the organs are in place where mm -hmm. they're going. Um, the really tricky thing with these guys is getting blood. They are incredibly difficult to draw blood from, mm. especially enough to run some of these tests. But we were able to, we also were able to microchip each individual oh, in wow. here so that we can kind of keep track of, okay, well this one's health is is really great, mm. but if an animal, for instance, were to get sick or anything mm. like that, we could track that yeah. health a little bit better. So I'm guessing you don't want to get bitten. Ro no, rodents have don't. a tough bite. <laughs> so when you're doing that, saying getting a blood test, what did that mm -hmm. entail? So we actually had to immobilize them, and then that's when they were able to draw blood. The vet staff was great, okay. and we kind of pulled each individual out. So you're not just holding them? You like gave them laughing gas? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah pretty yeah. much. Um, they had a little face oxygen mask and everything yeah. was kind of adorable. It was a little stressful, but pretty, pretty yeah. cute too and yeah. fascinating because you just don't know with a colony dynamic like this, you just don't know how they're going to react. They're very scent oriented because they don't have great vision. They can see kind of dark and light, mm -hmm. but not specific details mm -hmm. because they're underground. They don't need to see shapes and yeah. stuff. They rely heavily on scent and touch. Yeah. So when they wake up and they're after they've been handled and everything, mm. you have to have some of that bedding from their their yeah. colony and their um, like yeah. soiled bedding to get that colony smell back on them, so that they won't attack each other. Yeah. Because that is a prominent thing. They come across other colonies in the wild, and it can get aggressive because each yeah. colony has their own specific scent. Yeah. So, but they did great. Yeah. It went as well as it ever could have gone. It was the first exam that we have ever had on these guys, so it was great. Well, it is neat. It's a neat example of how, you know, animal husbandry in a zoo can inform basic science about this species, because mm -hmm. I know there are researchers that study them at the University of Michigan and other places uh, to great effect, but the things you learn, they probably had never known, so probably mm -hmm. there's a scientific journal article coming yeah. out of this. Oh, that hope, would be awesome. Hope you're one of the authors, because <laughs> that's That would great. be neat. I would love to be, so. Well, I'm fortunate to have sort of seen these in the wild. The zoo's involved in southern Kenya, and one time we're out wildlife watching, and I look across and there's some baboons sitting there, just sitting like this, <laughs> and they appear almost like we would at a movie theater. They reach down, they like stick their hand on the ground, and pop something in their mouth. Oh no. <laughs> stick something in the ground and pop it in their mouth. And we're looking and looking, and they were right above 
some naked mole rats. Okay. And these baboons were just dining out on them. Oh my so, gosh. What the heck? That they do it. reproduce, fortunately, just like rodents. So they yeah. have often a litter of anywhere from one to 25 individuals. So those couple may not make a huge impact unless yeah. it was the queen or something like it that. It was something, yeah. Everybody's got to eat. That's right. Well, Michelle, thanks. This was <laughs> yeah, great. You're welcome. Be sure to hit the insectarium next time you're here at the Cincinnati Zoo.